I am David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Keith Hershey is a farm kid who worked in the oil industry in and around Tabor, Alberta. He came up with the amazing idea of taking abandoned well sites, of which there are about 170,000 in Alberta, and bringing new life to them by transforming them into small solar farms. We did this story some time ago, but wanted to see the project up close and find out why this amazing idea isn't taking off. So we met up with Daryl Bennett. He works with Keith Hershey at Renewell, but he's also a director with the local and Alberta surface rights organizations. Hi, uh, my name is Daryl Bennett. We're here just uh, outside of Barnwell, a couple miles, which is a little bit to the west of Tabor. So you're looking at uh, one of the two Renewell sites. This site uh, had been an orphan well site in the Orphan Well Association since I believe around 1980. It had caused a bunch of problems to the landowner. He's a specialty crop grower. He grows Tabor corn and vegetables. Um, and this site uh, was heavily contaminated and it took quite a few years for it to, to get cleaned up. And so he was looking at uh, ways that he could put this land still into productive use. And I had mentioned that uh, there were companies that were trying to build small solar projects. And so I approached him and he agreed to, to put a small solar project on this. The former abandoned well was transformed into a solar farm. So this site is, uh, I believe, about three acres and there's about 750 kilowatts. And uh, that amount of power will probably power 30 irrigation pivot systems and their pumps in the area. This project was developed by the St. Mary's Irrigation District. That uh, resolves some of the county concerns and the landowner concerns and saves uh, the province quite a bit of money. And it also stabilizes our local grid with renewable energy. This site is wasn't really being farmed, it's in a pivot corner, so it's kind of a brownfield site that the landowner doesn't need. Um, we're not using prime agricultural land and it's uh, still replacing the revenue stream that he's been used to on this land. So a lot of the power generated from this site will never hit the transmission lines. It will be used by the, the neighbors right around here that have their own pivot systems and uh, the solar power is generated in the summer and that's when we need the power for our irrigation pivots. So it uh, just coincides very well with that. The nice thing is the small solar farm provides lease revenue for the farmer and taxes for the municipality, which have been lost when the well was abandoned. Bennett says a number of groups are interested in developing solar on the abandoned well sites. There's actually quite a few um, entities that could do this. The landowner itself, himself, could do it with a microgeneration project. There are community co-ops that want to build these projects. There's other entities that want to invest and use it as a small-scale generation project, which IRICAN has done in this case. There might be opportunities for some of the irrigation districts to make their own utilities, generate the power and sell it to consumers that are irrigation farmers. Um, some of the large landowners can go up to five megawatts on some of these sites. Some of the large uh, potato growers, some of the Hutterite colonies, easily can use that amount of electricity. Alberta has 466,000 oil and gas wells. About one-third are active, and about 170,000 are inactive or abandoned. The liability has been pegged at $33 billion. Many wells have been abandoned for more than a decade. Repurposing these sites as small solar farms is energy transition at its best. At this, if there's 150,000 sites that need to be reclaimed and you did 10%, that's 15,000 sites. And if you put a megawatt on each one, that's 15,000 megawatts. That's about what Alberta uses a day already. So you could replace a huge amount of the energy that uh, electricity that Alberta needs. These small solar farms make the grid more resilient, make good use of the existing electricity distribution system, and provide lease income for farmers and taxes for municipalities. Then why is the idea not taking off? Turns out it's red tape and regulatory barriers that are holding things up, which we explore in our blog at greenenergyfutures.ca. We're heard Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday on CKUA. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.